In this presentation, we're going to record the purchase of inventory with the use of our bank feeds. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Triple G Company dashboard. We're going to be opening up our financial statements. Let's go on down to the accounting drop down. Let's open up the balance sheet report. I'm going to duplicate the report by going to the tab up top, right clicking on the tab up top, duplicating that tab. Doing the same for the income statement. I'm going to go back to the tab to the left. Then we're going to be opening up the income statement with it. Selecting the accounting drop down, going on down to the income statement. So we'll open up the income statement. Once that opens up, we're going to go back to the tab up top. We're going to duplicate it by right clicking on it and duplicating that tab. And now let's open up our bank reconciliation. Going back to the tab to the left, going to the accounting drop down. This time going to our reports. This report's going to be under the accounting section. So we're going to go down to the accounting section and we're going to be looking at the bank reconciliation summary. Then I'm going to go back up top. Once that opens, right click on the tab up top and duplicate that tab. Let's change the dates now. We're going to go to the balance sheet tab. Going to go and bring this date up to March. We want to bring this as of March uh, 31st. Update that report. So that's what we have so far for the balance sheet. Income statement looks good. Bank reconciliation. Changing the information. Bank account being Chase as the bank account. The date is going to be March. We want to be in March 31st. And we'll update uh, that report. Back to the first tab now. And we're going to be opening up by going to the accounting drop down, the bank accounts tab. Then we're going to be looking at the reconciliation. We have 10 reconciling items. So we're going to go into the reconciling items. Now we're going to be considering inventory. Inventory is kind of something that throws a wrench or messes up our, our process in some, in some cases because it's basically a, an accrual type of thing. And we're, we've been, we're wanting to do a cash basis type of thing. So we're going to have money that's spent for, let's say, inventory. And that's, that's going to be items such as our Epiphone. We sell guitars. We're imagining we're buying and selling guitars. So we're going to buy from a vendor Epiphone and then sell that. Now, if you look at the flow chart, then what would typically happen with regards to inventory? If we buy inventory, typically we might have a purchase order where we would basically request the inventory. No financial transaction at that point. And then we would receive it. We'd have a bill. And we'd enter the bill, which would increase the accounts payable and the inventory uh, at that at that point in time. And then we would basically pay the bill, which finally that would affect cash. That's when the cash would be decreasing at that point. Then we would take that inventory and sell it with an invoice that would be going into the customer cycle. And uh, then we would receive money at, a, at some point in the future. So when we buy inventory, then what happens is... Uh, it's kind of like the equipment. When we buy it, we, we don't typically expense it at the point of purchase like other types of purchases. What we do instead is we put it on the books as an asset because we haven't used it to help us consume or generate revenue. And that's a deviation from the cash method because if it was a cash method, we would simply expense it when we purchased it. That's when we paid for it. If we paid cash for it, we would expense it at that point in time. So what can we do about that with, with regards to our system? Because we would like to, we're trying to think of a simplified system where I could just wait till everything clears the bank and then use the bank transactions to make the financial statement. So how do I deal with inventory then? Well, a couple ways you could deal with it. It depends on what type of inventory you have. One, uh, you can track the inventory outside of the zero accounting software. And in that case, then you can, you can use the bank fees to, to put the inventory into the system and go into the asset account of inventory without tracking the actual items of inventory. In that case, for our, for our purposes, like the guitars, I wouldn't know which guitars or how many guitars we would have. I just know that I have the dollar amount in inventory of the guitars. Then I could track the actual guitars on a spreadsheet, possibly, using some type of, of method, like a first in, first out method, or some kind of inventory flow. I can count the inventory that we have at the beginning and the end of the day, or the beginning end of the week, or the beginning end of the month, using kind of a periodic inventory system and then do basically a journal entry to record the decrease of the inventory and the related cost of goods sold on a periodic basis, every day, every month, every week, or something like that. That's one method we could use. Or we could say, hey, look, if I just buy the inventory, let's say I only buy the inventory of the guitars and I sell them very quickly. Let's make, let's make believe that we have a system where people buy custom guitars from us. They make an order from us. We then order that information from the vendor and then we sell it, we turn around and sell it very quickly. In other words, we don't have a lot of inventory that's on hand all the, all the time. 
we basically purchase the inventory and then sell it. Well, in that case, the, the turnaround time of the inventory may be fairly small and you could do, you might be able to get away with doing basically the easiest type of thing that there would be to do, which is the cash basis system and just say, hey, look, when I purchase the inventory, I'm just going to expense it at that point in time. I'm just going to expense the inventory because I'm going to turn around and sell it. I'm not holding on to a lot of inventory and therefore I don't want to track it through inventory and then record it as an expense. I'm going to record it basically as cost of goods sold directly at the point in time that we pay for it. And so that would be the easiest method. So that's what we'll do this time. I'll, I'll just record the inventory as an expense at the point in time we purchase it. And, and, and that, that'll be that way we don't have to deal with the inventory. Next month, we'll talk about how we might put it on the books as an inventory and do it in that method. So we can see kind of both methods. Here's the cash basis method, the easiest method that you would do, but it's not actually tracking inventory here. We're just expensing it at the point of purchase. And, I, and this is something that you would want to consider if you're dealing with inventory, talk to your, you know, your accounting professional, your tax professional to help out with that. But this would be like a cash basis type of method. So I'm going to go down here and look for any kind of inventory items. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to say, all right, these are deposits and I'm looking for the outflows. So I think I missed them all here. I'm going back up top. So E-Trade, no. We're looking for Epiphone. So this is an inventory item for Epiphone. So I'm going to do the same thing on, on the right. I'm going to say, all right, let's do the quick ad this time. I'm going to say that this is going to be who. I could just copy Epiphone. Now I'm not, I, I could create a rule also, but I'm not going to create a rule for these items because we're going to, we're going to change how we do it in the second component. Instead of adding detail, I'll just do, do, do this quickly. Uh, in the quick kind of add feature, it's going to be a new contact. The account that we're going to want to be using, I'm going to pick cost of goods sold. So I want an expense account, cost of goods sold. And then why, and this is going to be inven, like I'll say inventory. And that's it. That's all we need to basically record you know, the minimum amount of data. That's typically all, all we basically need. Then I'm just going to go ahead and add that. And then once we add that, the same kind of process will happen. If I go to the balance sheet then, and I go up top and update the balance sheet, we should now have an increase to, or actually to the, we should have a decrease in the checking account, which means it's going to increase the liability. So it's going to go in the negative direction because we don't have any money in it yet because we haven't recorded the beginning balance, which we will do in a future presentation. So if we go on into the balance sheet, we should see that going down by the 400. Then I'm going to go back up to the balance sheet. Let's go to the income statement then. I'm going to update this and this is where the difference happened. Instead of us putting it on the books as an asset of inventory, we simply expensed it because we expect it to be, you know, used in order to help us generate revenue shortly. So it's on the ex on the in income statement as cost of goods sold. That way we kind of skipped the step of going to the balance sheet and then expensing it. We just went directly to the income statement, which is a cash basis more method and and you know easier to do. The reconciling item uh, if we see the reconciling item here, it's there until we update it. So I'm going to update this report and it'll disappear because now we've, we've reconciled it. It's not, it's no longer a difference between our books and the bank books. And then, uh, if we go back to the first tab, uh, we know that it will now appear in the accounts transactions over here. So in our accounts transactions, we have the 400 now and it's reconciled. All right, let's go back up to the first tab and see if we have any more of these inventory items. See if I, if I don't miss them this time because I kind of missed them last time here. So I'm going to go down E-Trade. This is a deposit. That's a deposit. Gibson, which is spelled wrong, should be Gibson. <laughs> it's Gobson. All right, but that's what, how we're going to say it here. So we're going to say that's another guitar distributor. So I'm going to say the same thing here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to say that's going to their new contact. I'm going to say the this is going to be cost of goods sold. I'm just going to start typing it in there and there we'll have it. And then why I'm going to say this is inventory. And then again, I'm just going to uh, say OK. And again, we could set up rules for this. We'll talk more about rules later, but this is how you can kind of add this quickly. Now, note this one. It's guessing right now. It said, hey, you know, it didn't it didn't create a rule for us, but it still kind of helped us to populate it here. It's saying, hey, look, that looks like we've seen Epiphone before. Is do you want to create this one here? Do you want to create this transaction? And notice it's not matching the transaction. It's saying, look, I reconcile I recognize the Epiphone vendor and and 
you know, you've written something to Epiphone in the past and you added something. It's not a rule, but it's a suggestion. So it's suggesting that we're going to say, yeah, that's going to Epiphone. Looks like the right account. And so notice that even if you don't use the rules, it, it'll give you kind of suggestions like this as you do the second month of operations usually, which will make it a little bit, a little bit easier. Uh, I, I like to do the rules when you have the opportunity to do the rules because uh, the, the rules will make it a little bit more defined that you, that you want these transactions to happen. Uh, and, and it'll create based on, on you, you know, your specifications rather than it just kind of matching it up. But if you don't use the rules at all, notice it's still kind of giving you a lot of help here. And you say, yeah, create that. So it's going to make it, you know, as we go. So then we have a draw and then we got the bank charges. So that's it. So we added those items. So then if I go to the bank statement tab, you'll note that those items related to our vendors have now been uh, added and they're, they're, they were already added. Now they're reconciled. That's Epiphone, Gobson, and uh, Epiphone here. And they're reconciled. The account transactions, now we added the transactions here and reconciled them at the same time. So that's going to be Epiphone, Epiphone, and uh, Edison, not Edison, and Gobson here. <laughs> Gobson. Okay, so then if I go to the balance sheet, we update the balance sheet. Let's see what happens. We're making our financial statement as we go. We didn't put anything into inventory, but we do have the decrease to the checking account here. So checking account is going down on the balance sheet side because we purchased this inventory items, which we just basically expensed at the point of purchase, in essence, being on a cash basis method. So there's going to be those, those decreases. So I'm going to bring that back. And then I'm going to go to the income statement. And if I refresh the income statement, we're going to have cost of goods sold now uh, will be increasing given the fact that we paid for these items. So I'm going to update this report. I, thought I tried to update it, but I missed the button apparently. And here it is. Here's the cost of goods sold. So now we're expensing it. Notice we don't have any revenue yet. We're basically recording the expense at the point in time we paid for the, for the inventory before we, we recorded the revenue. Now all the deposits that we have on our bank feeds would typically be revenue and we'll take those deposits and that's when we'll, we will record the revenue side. So there is that. If I go back to the uh, income statement, we're there. And then if we go to the reconciliation, these items are now in the items that are should be the difference between the book balance. Notice the book balance is that negative 20,000, 24,020, which is on the balance sheet, right? That's what it is on the balance sheet. Actually, it's not because I have to update it. When I update it, it will be the 39,618. And then we have these items related to uh, Gobson, Epiphone. Those will disappear, which should bring us, bring us closer to the reconciled item on the bank statement, which would be this 90,000 here, 190,728. So let's go ahead and update this. I'm going to update this report. And you'll see then that our book balance is now at the 39,618 because we added those items and those reconciling items that were outstanding are now are now gone. So that's what's happening to this this report. And uh, that's it for now. Let's get out of here.